All right, guys, Hatch Kramick again today. Hope you're doing good and enjoying your day so far with the World Cup done and dusted. Now the question turns to roster mania. Which teams, how many teams, and what sort of changes will we see from these rosters over the coming weeks and months, potentially? The top teams that won this event and won the World Championship will likely not be making any moves at all. But what does that mean for the rest of the field in terms of catching up to the top? Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. Sensational exchange here to start off the video. Let's talk about some stats from the World Cup. We talked about Selium earlier today, and Selium's numbers were ridiculous. He had a 1.36 in hard points, he had a 1.35 in control, and he had a 1.67 in search. So, um, yeah, not bad. Decent weekend for Selium. Geo actually topped the numbers, though, in hard point KT with a 1.36. Wasn't in the tournament that long. Scrap and Insight both had a 1.25 plus. Pretty interesting in terms of what that team looks to do, Toronto Ultra, because they're not going to stick it out. There's no way they can, given where the teams that are clearly better than them are. And also even talking about Thieves, as we'll get to in a second. Speaking of Thieves, again, no players here on the Search and Destroy list. Probably expected as you go deeper in the tournament. That if you bomb out early, it's possible you had a few great maps like Real and Arsties and everything like this. Shots as well, though, 1.56, very impressive. But Draz and Cell leading the way in Search and Destroy, pretty scary. Scrappy is always going to be there or thereabouts on this list. Here he is with a 1.36 in control. Gwyn, even Harry was here as well from the Gentle Mates team. And then Cammy as well, who I actually think really showed out this weekend. Listening to his comms in the Boston Listen In, I actually thought it was really impressive. And at the end of the day, Boston came into this tournament. They got out of their group pretty emphatically, right, all things considered. And then they got 3 0 by FaZe. But, you know, basically everyone was getting 3 0 very closely by FaZe. So not a bad tournament for Boston really at all. There's questions on what they're deciding to do next, of course. In the end, 100 Thieves do go down for Phase do not lose a series the entire tournament. They weren't losing many maps the entire tournament. I think they went, what, 16 in three map count, which is, you know, pretty impressive and <laughs> pretty impressive. Silly about a 1.46, by the way. But a BZ, I mean, 131 kills for both the BZ and Cell. That is, um, you know, indicative of a very impressive tournament. And Simp was exactly even. 1.00 flat KT. Draza was pretty much there or thereabouts. Just an impressive overall performance here from FaZe. Cell playing more aggressive as he did. Fewer kills for Draz. Fewer kills for Simp to go around. But um, what did it equate to, right? A, a pretty comfortable event victory in the end. 100 Thieves, though, were just very impressive to me. And I'm glad that they were impressive because they at least made it interesting in the grand finals. Ghosty had, like, one of his worst tournaments ever and um, like you can say what you want about the Papania and the withdrawals or whatever. Um, I'm sure that there's some, you know, from discussions that we had over the last couple of days, I'm sure that there was something in that. It might not have been a massive deal, but definitely Ghosty didn't have his best weekend, but imagine that he did because his teammates all turned up big time. I think Nasty was maybe my like most favorite player to watch at the weekend, most improved player in some sense. Like Nasty really turned up this weekend's, and arguably did enough Nasty, most damage on this team in the finals, to secure his spot for next season. I think Nasty to me has, and this was true last year as well, is always on the border of being about a top 20 player. Like, I think he's roughly fifth or sixth best in his role. Now, is that good enough to win championships? You can debate that, but I think Nasty, definitely an underrated player, Often makes the correct play, very rarely makes too many mistakes, does have some decent playing power as well, and I think we saw that this tournament. So, you know, nasty people are talking about, okay, in the flex category, where does he stand? He might well be fifth, something in that kind of category, and then you've got, you know, loads of SMGs that probably are there or thereabouts, and then you've got all the ARs. So, you know, nasty's kind of in that kind of ballpark of top 20 player in the league, I would say. And his performance this weekend, I would say, should be enough to maintain his spot, but then again, you've got to ask if you can improve improve where you potentially should improve. Joe Deceives, I think, definitely secured his future, I would say. He was very impressive to me and um, certainly in control with both weapons when necessary. He's always going to overheat and make some mistakes, but um, I still think Joe Deceives did enough. Crimp is still the one that I'm a little bit 50-50 on just because he's a bit too inconsistent for my liking, but when he's on, he is on, of course, and Ghosty we know what he's capable, even though he didn't have a great event here, but just impressed by Thieves. Very young team. I think the youngest team in the league, possibly. They've been improving basically every single event that they've gone to. 
So I think for thieves, there is a question on what you actually do going forward. There's also a question on what you do from like a coaching point of view, because we know that Jacob stepped away. Shane is now there as a full-time coach. Of course, Trey's looking for coaching opportunities as well. Whatever happens next for Trey, wherever he goes next, I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure that he's still on Dope Check next season. So, you know, don't worry about that, boys. We're doing an episode here in a couple of hours, actually, from Riyadh, again at the Boulevard City, where the Esports World Cup was held. The Back to the 100 Thieves situation, what do you guys do if you are nade shots? Because let's say the formal thing is actually realistic and formal does want to join Thieves. And also, as I said after Champs, this proves that Thieves are like a serious org again because they've taken a team of players that were... I mean, Joe Deceives was a borderline challengers player at the start of the season. He was on Gorillas last year. Was he going to get a spot in the league? It wasn't clear. They decided to give him a go. Of course, Afro was here as well. They made a couple of tweaks. Cami was here. They got rid of those guys. Krimp then comes in, another player from challengers. Nasty again, another player that's on the brink of... Was he in challengers? Was he in pro league? Like... These were not pro league staples. Only Ghosty really was after last season. And they've come through, they've worked together as a team, and they've become a serious force. And I think that's also very commendable for other teams in the league to look at and say, hey, this is the blueprint for how to do a rebuild year. And the exciting thing for Thieves is that they have like potentially more money to spend this year if they want to potentially try and upgrade their roster as well. But also, they've done so well that the upgrade is quite tricky, right? Because Ghosty is probably going to stay on Thieves. But because the phase thing isn't going to happen, I would imagine that he's going to stay on Thieves. So that's probably locked in within reason. So then you've got to think for the other guys, well, you're so good in some on some level... The, what do you do? But you might not be good enough to win an event. And that's the problem. They've come fourth. They've come second. Is it going to be enough to get over the line? That is another question, of course, entirely. I think the main theory is that with FaZe winning, they're not going to be blowing it up right. The question going into this tournament was, would they swap out draws? because they're like out of game drama. My understanding is that a lot of that out of game stuff has been resolved to a great degree and um, probably won't play too much into their decision making going forwards. But, you know, that can all change potentially. Selium killed at this tournament. He ain't going anywhere. Abizi killed at this tournament. He ain't going anywhere. And Simp is Simp. So, you know, the team's going to stick it out. I'm very confident FaZe will. They literally won the World Cup. They seem to have found their rhythm again. And Optic versus FaZe will likely, with these rosters, continue to do battle. The issue is, though, when you've got two rosters this good, and you've got the FaZe team that won Major 2 in the World Cup, you've got the Optic team that won Major 3 and the World Championship, if you're some of the other teams, what are you going to do? You've probably got to consider blowing it up, right? So I think if you're Thieves, Joe Deceives should stay, Ghosty should stay. Krimp, like, I would want to keep Nasty as well, but the question is, like, if you have Slasher, maybe, or if you have even Formal, maybe, interested in joining the team, even, like, Scrappy, right? We'll discuss that in a second. Then, um, obviously, you're going to have to consider the situation there. And also for Crimp as well, I would say that an upgrade is definitely possible. But Joe Deceives, like, you know, so much more room for improvement, I think, for him this upcoming season. And um, it's exciting to see what this is going to be capable of. And honestly, at the end of the season, Thieves were clearly a top four team. Like, I did not expect to end the year in a situation where it was not one of Optic, FaZe, New York, or of course Cloud9 now, or Toronto top four. But it's quite obvious really that Thieves have to, they have to be a top four team right now. If there was another event tomorrow, I think I would expect Thieves to, you know, do the same performance again. Toronto were the team, really that to me were falling out of the top four at the end of the season and um, you know that's clearly nowhere near good enough to do what they're trying to do. Ghosty admits he had a bad tournament but another team with a bad tournament of course was Toronto Ultra. Yes they made it through their group but um, it wasn't the hardest group in the world. They then played Thieves who look Thieves are very good obviously they've made it to the finals but the fact that Toronto lost to Thieves again as they did at Champs for the first time they played that just shows the team isn't good enough right like that is just the straight up crux to the matter they started the season Toronto so well they still showed good promise I thought towards the end of the season as well but you know Thieves bringing the comeback they did game two against Toronto in that series winning the game five as they did in that series just shows Toronto right now do not have what it takes and I thought this tweet from Kleenex was interesting not sure what's next he says but um appreciate the support so what do we think is going to happen next with this Toronto Ultra team what changes are they going to try and make what does Scrappy think about the situation as well because if I'm Toronto 
there's no way that that team of scrap, like, you know, inside Kleenex and Envoy right now is going to be able to get back to the top. With the way that FaZe and Optic are looking, maybe they could, but I just don't think they think that. And neither will Scrappy. I think the question that I have this offseason is, are we going to go from a four-team league back to another four-team league? But what I mean by that, though, is that one of those teams is going to be replaced by Los Angeles Thieves, and one of those teams is going to become consolidated with Scrap and Hydra, right? I think if you are Scrappy, if you are Hydra, you have to look at this upcoming set of weeks and say, okay, if we want to form a team that's going to actually be able to beat Optic and FaZe with the way they're currently looking, we need to team up. And I think that they might be onto something there. So the question then is where, if ever, can that actually happen? The more likely possibility, I would say, is for Scrappy to somehow, you know, weasel his way out of Toronto, although contracts might make that very challenging, and go and join Hydra over on Cloud9. I don't really see it happening the other way. And the most likely possibility is probably that, you know, Ultra make a two-man change maybe, and maybe Cloud9 make a one-man change like you know for skies or for kismet or something like that i think they've got to think about it and i think they've probably got to do it whether they will i don't know but there is a possibility i would say a, a pretty sizable possibility that both of those teams see wholesale changes because you know phase winning means okay phase aren't going to blow it up boring but um it does also mean that other teams have to recognize that there is a lot to be done if they want to really, you know, form a competitive roster for next season. So, yeah, I'm fascinated to see what happens next year. But I think that Ultra are a big team to watch. I think Cloud9, of course, are a big team to watch as well. Whether they, you know, because also, is Hydra effectively Mbappe here? Where he calls the shots and... Hydra gets on very well with Kismet, I believe, and gets on very well with Skies. Sib maybe to some degree, but of course Sib's relatively new to the team anyway. So um, there's a few questions there. But if Scrappy comes to Hydra and says, hey, like, I want you to drop Caesar for me right now, we're going to run Scrap, Sib, Hydra, plus one. And maybe that plus one could even be Kleenex. I mean... Like, now we're talking, right? But we are also consolidating from a four-team league down to a three-team league. Although, as I say, maybe Los Angeles Thieves can throw themselves into the category. There's also just one other spanner in the works that I'll mention here, which is, this is a Talak here from Team Falcons. He's their esports operations manager. And here he is yesterday at the Falcon store with Hydra. Now, you might say there's nothing in this, but... It's got to be something, right? They go around the Falcon store, he finds him for a photo with a cloud eye jersey. Like... There's def I think there's definitely games being played here on some level. I don't know if Falcons are going to get a spot in the league. There's talk about the fact that they want a spot, but they might not be allowed a spot. Various kind of rumours and stuff that are going around. What would they do? Would they sign their own Saudi team that they currently have? Or would they say, Scrappy, Hydra, you're going to come here and we are going to form a squad that's going to beat the best teams. Because if I'm running Falcons, that's what I'm trying to do. Because my bank account is unlimited <laughs> within reason. So very much intrigued to your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below. Next time I'll be seeing you guys, I'll be back in the UK. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Played in the CDL, bro, we literally, bro, we literally, we literally walked, we literally walked so y'all well. can Shut run, up, bro. bro. Shut up. Bro, bro, Ernie, Ernie. Holy fuck. You Ernie, wine in my ear I won an all event and made 10 grand. Shut the fuck up. As a team. I won an event and made 10 grand as a team. Okay, man. and you couldn't win in the league. That's not my That's problem. That's not true. I won in the league. And I made shit for that, too. What did you win? I won a home series. And we made shit. And we made shit. It's like winning a qualifier match. So then Dallas Empire didn't win a ring. Okay. Shit's so stupid. Shit is so fucking No, that's a Mickey Mouse ring. That's a Mickey Mouse ring. We all know that's a Mickey Mouse ring. We all know that. Mickey Mouse ring, yeah. Okay. Well done, man. What a great run that was. Ender literally dropped the 1.4 from his bedroom. on 3 under Axe. Yeah, and you and people were here shitting themselves, got last place, and made 40 racks. So what's your fucking what's your fucking point, brother? What's your point? You fucking... You, 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 sh the, you show up and you make thousands. All right, shut up. All right, shut the fuck up.